A member of the UN's Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change says he and many other scientists do not see global warming as a developing catastrophe and that there is no smoking gun proving that human activity is to blame for the warming that does occur. John Christie is the director of the Earth System Science Center at the University of Alabama at Huntsville. He and thousands of others on the UN panel share half the Nobel Prize, also awarded to Al Gore. But he says he cringes when he hears 100-year weather forecasts when it is incredibly difficult to accurately predict the weather five days from now. He writes in the Wall Street Journal, quote, Mother Nature simply operates at a level of complexity that is at this point beyond the mastery of mere mortals, such as scientists, and the tools available to us. He points out that a recent CNN report on climate change made much of the shrinking Arctic sea ice cover, but did not mention that winter sea ice around Antarctica set a record maximum, maximum last month. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, as we debate what I agree is a very important piece of legislation, a, a piece of legislation, in, in my opinion, and many, many others would have a very detrimental effects on our economy if it was implemented the way it's been drafted. Uh, we've been trying to get a quantifiable grasp on the cost of this bill, how much uh, it would actually cost American families, uh, how many jobs would be cre uh, created and lost. And uh, we've Number one, on the science side, we've had very divergent views. We've had dozens of experts come over the last few days and testify, uh, giving very different opinions on the science. On the economics of it, we have not had the same kind of divergence. In fact, most economists and experts that have testified on the cost acknowledge, in fact, I'll, I'll refer to President Obama's own budget that uh, was just passed two weeks ago. If you go to page... 119 of the president's budget, he's anticipating generating $646 billion in new tax revenue from this bill. So clearly the president expects this bill to generate $646 billion in new taxes uh, that even his own budget director has said would be passed on to consumers. Congressman, you began by denying that there is a consensus on the science. There is a consensus on the science. Well, you must have been listening to our testimony that we've had for the last few days with dozens of experts that have come in who have given completely different views. Well, there so are I would, people, I, would I would encourage you to go back and look at the testimony there, this committee's heard. There are people who still believe that the moon landing was staged on a movie lot in Arizona. And neither of us was are one of those. And I know you like giving those cute anecdotes. This is not a cutesy issue. We're talking about no, that, that can export millions of jobs out of our economy, out of our country, and testimony has been given just to those numbers. And so we're talking about a serious consequence that there would be on this country and the carbon leakage that would occur where the carbon would be emitted, but it would be emitted in China and India, and the jobs would go to China and India. And that's been testified before this committee in the last few days as well. Man, so you testify about the actual cost. Do you want to man, talk about the cost? Man-made global warming pollution causes global warming. That's not a cutesy issue. It's not an open issue. It's your, and it's your opinion. Obviously, you've stated it many times. It's the, it's the, would you talk it's to the, the cost? It's the opinion of the global scientific community, and more importantly. And not in unanimity. No, there are others on the other more side. More importantly, more importantly, Congressman, that opinion is the opinion of the scientific studies conducted by the largest corporate carbon polluters 14 years ago who have lied to you and who have lied to the American people well, for 14 years. And you years. talk about carbon, and I've got to, I'm running out of time. We talk about carbon polluters. You talk about them. It's my understanding that back in 1997, when you were vice president, Enron's CEO, Ken Lay, was involved in discussions with you at the White House about helping develop this type of policy, this trading scheme. And uh, is, that, is that accurate? Is it inaccurate? It's, it's been reported. Uh, I, I, I don't know, but, but I, I met with uh, uh, Ken Lay, as lots of people did, before anybody knew, knew uh, that he was a right. crook. And, and clearly, it, you can see why so many of us are concerned about this type of cap-and-trade energy uh, tax that would be literally turning over this country's I energy economy. I didn't know him economy. well enough to call him Kenny Boy. Well, you, but you knew him well enough to help devise this trading scheme. And obviously, we know what Enron and these big guys on, uh, on Wall Street like Goldman Sachs, and I know you've got interest with Goldman Sachs. No. And these people, well, it's, that's been reported. Is, is that not accurate? No, I, I wish I did. With executives from, the, you're partnered in companies with executives from Goldman Sachs. Well,
With executives from the, you're partnered in companies with executives from Goldman Sachs. Well, if you're not, either way, Enron clearly had an interest in doing this when they were around. We saw what they did. And when you see the types of people involved in wanting to set up this kind of scheme, you can uh, see why so many of us are concerned about are turning you, our energy economy over to a scheme that was devised by companies like Enron and, and some of these Wall Street well, that, firms that, that have wrecked I mean, our financial economy. I, I, I don't really know uh, if you want me to respond to that. I, I guess what you're trying to say, it, you, you're trying to... Uh, I mean, clearly there will be big winners and big losers. Of, You're trying to say fired, there's some kind, the vice kind of to guilt by association? Is that is that Not association. I'm saying that there are going to be big winners and big losers in this bill. And that's been discussed by everybody talking. Big winners and big losers. But some of the big winners are some of the very financial experts that help destroy our financial marketplace. And I think that should be noted that companies like Enron help come up with this trading scheme that would uh, be both Enron, in Enron, Enron didn't create uh, this this uh, uh, proposal in any way, shape, or form. Well, the that's details false, are not in this bill. That's a false accusation. The details are not in this bill, and I would suggest that they are. For well, the record, the proposal that we're considering has had the CEO of General Electric, of Alcoa, of Rio Tinto, of corporations across the country who have testified in conjunction uh, with major environmental groups. That is the proposal that we are considering. But we always then come down to arguing about uh, the did global warming cause Katrina? And did global warming cause the death of a polar bear? And there are going to be arguments on both sides. Why not just leave that aside? Why not focus on the security? Why not focus on the economy? Why why do we have to be in a position of picking winners and losers? We've just watched a financial meltdown in this country, the likes of which hasn't been seen in some time. Now, if people like credit default swaps, they're really going to like the carbon swaps that are going to occur and the carbon future swaps. We spent a full day in this committee last summer talking about the manipulation of the energy futures market in oil. We're going to create, I fear, another such system that... Uh, People who are, 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 have a, a, an inclination to react dishonestly to systems are, are going to actually have a, a new opportunity. Is that not a problem? Well, let me, let me uh, look at your analogy in a slightly different way. There were warnings that the credit default swaps uh, and the subprime mortgages and the other uh, activities that caused the financial crisis we're going to bring us ruin if we didn't address them. And nothing was done about it. If I could finish my answer. There are warnings now of a far worse catastrophe. And they're coming from a unified IPCC representing the global scientific community. And if nothing were to be done about it, the results would be far worse. Now, let's look at the, the subprime mortgages. I, I remember the days when you made a down payment and proved you could make the monthly payments. And the ri we were told the risk was washed away by securitizing them and lumping them together. And that assumption collapsed. We now have several trillion dollars of subprime carbon assets whose value is based on an assumption that it's perfectly okay to put 70 million tons of that pollution up there and this is every what I, 24 hours. I, so I, the reason to, in I, answering your first question is why, we, up, why can't we ignore it? Because it's the biggest crisis we've ever faced. And no one who's come before this committee from a scientific basis can show us the smoking gun that mankind is causing this to happen. There are, you can create relationships between the number of sunspots and the partisan makeup of the Senate. Anything can be proven if you're willing to take the time to have the numbers. Con let, Congressman me just go, let me just go to another point because it was a but, terribly could I, important... Could I respond to that? No, I need to make this point. Uh, Mr. Dr. Apt, who was with us yesterday, and he said it so eloquently that we have to focus on reducing carbon dioxide rather than trying to pick winners and losers in this. If we will focus on what is the reasonable thing to do, whether we want to focus on security, whether we want to focus on the economy, or we can spend a lot more time arguing about the science of, of, of climate change, when we construct this bill, and, and, and Senator, Lieberman, uh, Senator Warner said it so well, when we construct this bill, we have to have the flexibility that we give people credit for doing the energy efficiency things that we want them to do. We give people credit for creating the newer technologies that we want them to do, rather than us pick every jot and tittle of winners and losers in the bill, which is unfortunately the draft that we have in front of us.